Let's just continue just to raise our hands as we worship the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just feel the presence of the Lord this morning as we sing and worship Him. Jesus. 
for me in the thunder and in the storm and I was not there. Today is that still small voice that we need to hear from God this morning. Just wherever you are, just be still before the Lord and listen out for that still small voice. Hallelujah. Jesus. This morning I distinctly feel the word of the Lord saying, align yourself with my will. The Lord says, I've come and I've instructed you in the way you must go, but you have chosen otherwise. 
This morning I come and I say, through my spirit, align yourself to my will. That way you will have success, not just success because of monetary terms, but because you will have success in the spirit. And as it starts in the spirit, it cascades down to all the other aspects of your life. Align yourself to my word. Align yourself to my will, which is my word. Do not turn to the left nor to the right. Do not forsake those instructions that you have been given and turn to other ideas, to other uh, answers. I am the answer to that situation you are facing. Just align yourself to my will. Just align yourself to my will. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Just as we are about to turn the service for the word this morning, we just want to worship just a little bit more and draw ourselves closer and that the Lord may be able to speak to us. Amen. Thank you, Father. If you're seated, if you don't mind, you can just rise to your feet. Hallelujah.
And sometimes we repel the presence of the Lord by not worshiping God the way He wants us to worship Him. We repel the presence of the Lord sometimes from our situation by the way we do not want to just yield to worshiping Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we do not, we are the ones that actually hinder the flow of the Spirit of the Lord because we do not worship Him, because we do not yield to Him. Amen. This morning, I just want us to pray a bit in the Spirit before we allow Pastor Morgan to come. We, we, we did not leave our comfort homes so that we can just waste our time. I know each and every person has left home because they want to meet God. Amen. Amen. You have left home because you want to meet God. Amen. Amen. You've left home because your situation is different from mine. Amen. And so we will not allow any other spirit to come and stop what God wants to do this morning. Amen. We're just going to raise up our voices this morning. Please do not pray like you want to ask for a chewing gum from God or anything. But pray because your life is dependent upon God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I'm just going to encourage us to raise our voices and begin to pray this morning. Hallelujah. <speaking in Spanish> Manzeta tarabo soto ndoro bobo sha manziti kata tarabo bobo setele besa manzeta tarabo bobo sita tande besa manzita tarabo bobo seta tarabo bobo senda manzutu kushoka tarabo sende besa manzete rebe rebe seta tarabo bobo seta basutu rubu shite kata tarabo bobo senda manzete rebe bobo siti tarabo bobo se manzete tarabo bobo si tarabo bobo se mande tarabo bobo Sida, <laughs> Rend my God for our garments in the land of Abbasera. Open our hearts, open the heavens. He shall turn up Abbasera. He shall turn up Abbasera. Mazuru <laughs> <laughs> 
Rabele Brusu, Rivi Bisoto, Shivi Bosseta, Manzoto Bos, Hallelujah, Ribella Borebo Seta de Besta, Rivi Bosondo Boste, Sundu Rian de Besso, Shivi Bisondo Bobo Bosso, Manzoto Bobo Bosso, Manzoto Bobo Bosse, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Mandera <laughs> Barudi diata, Mazush Kotoya, Mazush Kotobos, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Riba la Bobo Bosses. Shebobo said about Bosta, Ribi Ribi Sotonomosta. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 One more time! Shout Hallelujah! 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 Woo! Jesus! Wow! We bless you, Father. Father, we bless you. Yes, Lord. Now we can hear your word, Lord. We bless your name. Lord, no word will be stolen. Hallelujah. No word will be stolen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. No word will be stolen today. Hallelujah. God is God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just stand before we ask Pastor Morgan. Hallelujah!
sing as he comes to minister this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus.
Just hold somebody's hands. Hand. Just hold somebody's hands. Just hold we can implore when you are sent the baby can send the baby Oh, just bless that person in the name of Jesus. Bless that person in the name of Jesus. Kura la bende be kosi katala bahambe. Shiba la mangendo bloste la ba kanse kende lebe. Tibala la ba diaba kumembre. Tibala mende bo kosi kana murende lebe lebe yanza. Siba ya kumembre de vo se kanta la ba kumamba. Jala ba kantrode. Tibala mende be zuba kante lebe kende. Shale bi ondi oblore ba hasa. Kire be se kende lebe yoko bambe eshota. Ah dia silebe. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for joining our hearts together, for joining our hearts together, for joining our faith together, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God, that as we walk with you in this journey, that, Lord, none shall faint, that none will faint. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, Father. We give you praise, oh, God, for your faithfulness, for your goodness, my God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, we bless your name. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name. Oh, riba hasekete reba hambendi asekatalaba. Kurebe diya baka sekere broste bahambe. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Father, as we transition to the preaching of your word this morning, we thank you, Lord, for touching each and every heart that is in this place. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us in a mighty way, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for confirming your word with signs and wonders. Thank you, my Father, for revealing your heart even in this season in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for granting us understanding in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Even as we just, Lord, oh, stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you. To honor and to love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As the music team just goes down, let's put our hands together and appreciate them. 
Let's just declare together. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father. Oh, you are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. We can take our seats. Allow me to welcome everyone this morning in the house of God. Amen. And also greet uh, those that are following us via Facebook, YouTube, and the very various platforms where you could be following us. It's such an honor to have you connecting with us wherever you are in the part of the world. We love you. Let's just put our hands together for people that follow us on Facebook. Facebook. They may not really see us clapping, but they are hearing the clap. Amen. Amen. We, we may be far away physically. To some of you, but spiritually we are together. Amen. Amen. This morning we just want to honor as well in the house. Apostle Ken. And Mom Bula in abstention. Thank you, our dearly loved parents. Uh, for standing with with us, for entrusting us uh, with good news of the gospel. We come under your anointing and under your grace. We also honor and appreciate all the leaders in the house. Pastors, elders, deacons, and everyone who is here. We cannot stand here if you will not come for the service. So we really appreciate you. Now tap yourself on your shoulder and say you are doing well. You have done well coming to the house of God. Especially today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's take our reading from Isaiah 40 verse 28 to 21. And then also 48. we will read from um, John, John 13. Yes, but let's begin from uh, Isaiah 40 verse 28. A scripture that we all know by now is like an anthem. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no mighty increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want you to take note of these three key phrases there. Those who wait. They shall mount up. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The title of my message today is Walk with God. Do not faint. Now let's go to John chapter 13. We're reading from uh, verse uh, 2. And, and, and supper being ended, the devil have, have, having already put it in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, Simon his son to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and he had from he had come from God and was going to God. He rose from supper and laid his garments, took a towel and geared himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash 
you, you have no part with me. And I want you to, that to remain in your heart. If I do not wash your feet, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and head. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. You are clean, but not all of you, for he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, you are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, do you not know what I have done? You call me teacher and Lord, and that you, you do well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, run, walk with God. Do not faint. We don't spend our lifetime running. Most of the time we walk. Even after doing a marathon. Or after doing a lot of errands. You find yourself coming to a place of rest. And maybe after resting a little bit, you start walking bit by bit and then you increase your momentum. So it seems in life we are called to walk and not just, I'm not talking physically here, but I'm talking in our relationship with God. And at the same time also demonstrating a truth about what walking with God is. And so by way of definition, it says walking with God refers to a life of fellowship, obedience, continuous growth in one's personal relationship with God. To walk means to practice something habitually and make it a consistent lifestyle. In other words, it becomes part of you. It cannot be separated from you. Because you are walking in it. You are living in it. You are expressing yourself in that lifestyle. So that's what walking with God is. There is many Bible characters from the Old Testament. I will mention few. Those that walked with God. Enoch walked with God. We read from Genesis 5, verse 22 to 24. And then it says, And Enoch walked habitually with God and in fellowship, and he was no more. For God took him home with him. That's the Amplified. So the word Enoch, the name Enoch, means one who is dedicated. We see that Enoch was translated. He did not see death. He was not found anymore. He disappeared. He raptured. But before he was translated, as we read, he had this testimony. Say he had this testimony that he pleased God. The second character is Noah. Noah walked with God. As we see in Genesis 6 verse 9, it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And in verse 13, we read again, it says, by faith, Noah being warned of, by God of the things that were to come, he prepared an ark that was to serve his household. Amen. Amen. We can see also Noah walked with God. See, I want to know what and I the things that Kulu. he did Les were as a result of that he walked with God. It was a lifestyle. Abraham also walked Abraham with God. Kulu. When God appears to him in Genesis 17, we read, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply 
multiply you exceedingly. It was his lifestyle of walking in obedience, hearing from God. We do realize that these men, they did not have a religious experience, but they had relationship. Say they had relationship. Which is what we are called to have. Do you realize that they even lived before the laws of Moses were given? Which means their lifestyle was not of do's and don'ts. They depended on praying, giving offerings, hearing what God is saying, and responding in like manner. They had a relationship with God. And we know God is the one who initiated relationships with men. For instance, when he came in the Garden of Eden and said to Adam, where are you? It is when men this continues the relationship with God that he begins to walk in religion. What is religion? Religion is man's effort trying to reach to God. And it will never yield anything. It will never edify. We will miss out on what God is doing. Because with religion, we use our intellect, our religious practices. Some even delve into spiritism trying to find God. As long as your effort of trying to reach to God is not based on having a relationship with Christ, allow me to submit it to you that according to the word of God, it is religion. If Christ is not there, whatever effort it is, it's religion. Walking with God is a relationship, is a closer walk. I've given examples of Old Testament. Brethren. Don't we find them in the New Testament? Oh, yes. We read about Zacharias and Elizabeth, parents to John. The Bible says they were both righteous before God, walking in all commandments and ordinances. Walking in all. Hallelujah. Amen. That walking in all should should suggest to you that you don't leave anything. Remember, in the, by this time, it was what was called the, the, the dark times where there is no revelation from fresh revelation from God or no prophetic direction. So they lived from what they knew on what they knew but continue to be faithful before God. We also read about Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 2 to 4, a devout man, one who feared God with all his household, gave arms generously to the people and prayed to God always. Ah, uh, hallelujah. Amen. So you have no excuse when Agula to say, well, probably Abraham, Enoch, they were in better times. No, they were not in better times. We are actually more in better times than them because we live under grace, under the new covenant, filled by the Holy Spirit, who happens to be our friend, one called to minister, to help us. Us. So when God comes to, 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 to Cornelius, he says, What is it, Lord? This is his response. So he, he said, said to him, Your prayers, your arms, your giving, your serving, your walk with me, your fear for my name. Ah. Has made me to come. So, has has become as a memorial. So, I am pleased. Hey, 
I like that. I like that. When God says, I'm pleased with you, I'm pleased with what you are doing, can God say that to you? Can he truly say, I'm pleased with you? We can see that walking signifies fellowship. And also serving like Cornelius. Because he ministered by giving. Did you know that the other word to minister is, is the word to wait upon? Like a waiter at a restaurant or in a hotel, he waits, she waits for a client to come so that she can attend or he can attend to the client. So we are not just saying, wait for the Lord. We are saying, be like a waiter who waits with anticipation. His job, his job is to wait because he knows and I believe that a good waiter, a spirit-filled waiter, will not just be waiting there helplessly. She will be or he will be praying in the spirit, calling for the clients. Why? Because he knows that if clients don't come, I don't have any chip. So to minister, to serve others as you walk with God is a form of waiting, is a form of service. And so which is why, therefore, that as we serve in this manner, our walk with God must never be conformed to the systems of this world. As the Bible warns us in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, we should be careful just because the world says this or a majority of people say that or it is public opinion that certain behaviors are accepted because it looks good in our eyes and in my eyes it does not make it right before God. Therefore, a person who walks with God does not seek to please friends as such. But seeks to please the one who has called you. That is your call and I to walk with him, to please him. Why? Because you and I, we are created in Christ for good works that we should walk in them. Say good works that I should walk in them. Therefore, walking with God is a demonstration that I know him. I know the one who called me. I know the one who served me. Sometimes we walk in a particular way but say something else with our mouths. But can I submit it to you that when it comes to things of God and any outcome thereof, we should walk the talk Leave what we confess. Never be something else different in church and be something else different at home. Your life won't be telling. You don't walk with God in church and walk with something else at home. I am allowing it to sink deliberately. Because walking with God should never be a pretended or a rehearsed thing. It should be real. It should be seen. It should be tangible. Because God wants to be pleased. He is looking daily. Hey, when are you going to ever please me? Hallelujah. Amen. 
Let's just look at some few scriptural as, as challenges in, in, in or exhortations on walking with God. Psalms 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words, you are blessed the moment you choose to separate yourself from a particular person simply because they are walking ungodly. You connect yourself with the blessing of God. But if you choose to please them, even if they are your blood sister or brother, the moment they are ungodly, the moment they are leading you astray. You may miss out on the blessing of God. In the council. In other words, you don't take their advice. If you are to hear the advice or receive the advice, test it. Weigh it. Does this help me? Is this helping me in my walk with God? Not in your walk with men. Amos 3.3, 3, the Bible says, well, how three. can two walk together unless they agree? There is no way you can agree. I want you to write this verse, uh, these next nine points because I'll just mention them quickly as I go. These are some of the scriptural exhortations about walking with God. Number one, we should walk with integrity. Proverbs 10.9 it says he walks with integrity, walks securely. In other words, you are secure when you walk with integrity. Number two, walk humbly before God. What is to walk humbly? It's to realize that without God, you are nothing. Whatever you have, you have because it is from God. If the Lord will take it away from you, you remain nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. We are somebody. I am somebody because of Christ. Outside of Christ, you and I can just be, be cast out. Number three, walk and live by faith, not by sight. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 7. Number four, Ephesians 4, 1 says, walk worthy of your calling. In other words, the calling aspect here is not for those that are preachers. People normally think that the, the moment you see the word calling, it refers to preachers. No. Every one of us here called, called to be born into this world, called unto salvation, called unto walking with God, called unto saving and in ministry, and eventually will all respond to the final call, is when we are called to go back to heaven where we came from hallelujah Amen. so this is a work of calling calling may also refer to any place where you are serving are you a cashier you are called to do that are you a nurse you are called to do that. Whatever role you play in society, that's your calling. It's God given. Number five, walk in love. Ephesians 5 2. As Christ also has loved us. Here we are all challenged. Love is not an issue of feeling good about loving somebody. A love is sacrificial. The, the me feeling in you would be this one is unlovable. But God's command is you walk in love. It's not a suggestion. It's not a proposal. It's not a vote. Let's vote. 
the most effective way how we can start to love somebody is to pray for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said you begin. I didn't say you stop there. After praying, you do. You act. Because when you pray, God will put something in your heart about that person. Therefore, you need to go. Minister to them. Number six, walk as children of light. We are light. We are salt. Number seven, we, we are called to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. We find all this in Ephesians chapter 5. In case uh, somebody uh, might have missed where we are. Number eight, we are called to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. In the spirit, meaning we are led of the spirit, we are energized by the spirit, we are encouraged by the spirit, we hear through the spirit, he ministers to us. I thank God for the new uh, uh, covenant. Because one of the greatest privileges is to know the Holy Spirit. To have fellowship with him. He is the one who helps us to walk this walk that we are talking about. You cannot do it on your own. You cannot copy somebody. It has to be original. You and God. In my first days of preaching, I remember some of the elders would come to me and say, Morgan, don't preach like so and so. Just be yourself. Why? Yes, I understand. I was still learning. And so I thought if I copy somebody, wow. Amen. As I matured, I became myself. I didn't need to be somebody else. So God is calling you to a place where you are original. Why? Because God is the I am who I am. He knows his identity. So you should know your identity. It is the work of the Spirit to enable us to be that which God has called us to be. Number nine, walking in truth. We are called to walk in truth. Wow, this verse really blessed me. First, First John 2, yeah, says, I have no greater joy, or rather, for I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is, that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Wow. To hear my children, that they walk, they walk in what? Especially these days. There is a lot of lies, theories, false gospels. Paul says to the Galatians in chapter 1, he says, I presented the true gospel to you. If another man comes and presents another Jesus, let him be accursed. Do not receive such a man. There is so many lies out there. Said so to say, sometimes we are found believing those lies. To the point that we find ourselves moving away from what we believed in from the beginning. In the name of, ah no, you need to understand. In these days, there is new revelations. If those revelations are not centered on Christ, if those revelations are not exalting Christ, if those revelations are not giving God glory, if those revelations are not pointing men to God, away with your revelations.
Because I've heard additional books of the Bible, the book of Enoch, the book of what, and people seem to be cleaning things from there. Why don't you accept the Bible completely as it is? Are you telling me centuries after centuries, those that adopted the word, God could not speak to them and say it. After all, the Bible says, no one should eat. Yeah. No one should even separate. Eat. So we should walk in what? In truth. Ask your neighbor, are you walking in truth? And is that truth walk, helping you? Remember, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Colossians 1.10, as I wrap up some of these exhortations from Paul, that you may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work, and steadily growing in the knowledge of God. Amen. Amen. And one of the things that I really felt I needed to cover is walking in humility. Let me begin by asking you a question. Have you ever washed somebody's feet? Going back to one of the texts that we read from the book of, 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 of John. When Jesus washed his disciples' feet. You know, the Lord had to... Help me see something that I had never seen before. I have read that portion only with a mindset of communion. But I've never read that portion with a mindset of, Lord, what, are you, what else are you saying? But after that, he poured water into a person and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel which he was getting. Then he came to Simon and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you shall never <laughs> wash my feet. It will never happen. You know, Peter was a character plus. Say Peter was a character plus. Peter, all the time when he was walking with Jesus, all what he thought was that probably the things that Jesus is doing, it's all physical. Don't worry, this is just a towel. And as Jesus is coming here, he's coming to demonstrate the truth of leaving them as disciples some eternal truths that they were to pass on to others as a way of working with God, serving one another. And so the Bible says, in that scriptural context, Jesus took a towel and wrapped himself with a towel. Now, the moment Jesus did that, he was saying, fine, you know me. As a priest, as the Lord, as the master. But I want to teach you that in this walk, there are times when you need to take away your dignity and humble yourself. That's why the Bible says that you may walk humbly. We put on suits when we come to church. Praise God. I'm putting on one. But the moment I tuck myself with a towel, all what I'm saying is business is now changing. I want to start sweeping. I want to do, start to do something which is dirty or something which is humbling or something that really is outside of the scope of man. So what did he do? Turn this way. He knelt, Jesus knelt. The Lord of the universe. 
With all the anointing, he knelt and he started to wash. The reason why Peter struggled with it is because this washing of feet, while it was a traditional custom and practice in ancient Israel, because there were no pavements then that are tiled. And so people would walk dusty roads. So when they come into a home, their feet are obviously full of dust. And so a maid in that home a servant in that home would then be the one who is given the assignment of washing the visitor's feet. So Jesus humbled himself in that manner. Do you realize again, before I continue, that when I come down, Jesus stripped off his diet. When I come down, he is sitting and I'm kneeling. And my focus as I wash him is on his face. There is no way I can look at him and do it genuinely if I don't love him. The reason why people cannot serve one another in the house of God and therefore they defile their work with God is because they cannot wash one another's feet. Feet are the most dirty part of a body. They step on anything. In ancient Israel, they did put on safety shoes. Like today, they put on sandals. That's all what they put. And so dust Thank you. will fill them. And it needed a slave. Say it needed a slave to wash the feet of the visitors. Can you be that slave? Not because you are made by men to act like a slave, but because you realize what God has called you to do. One of the things that I, I sometimes when I walk in town, like even last week, I'm just just walking, and I'm seeing this old lady. She's, she's limping, but at the same time, she's carrying two paper bags. And I can literally see they are heavy for her. I've not just done that for her. I remember one time doing it for a lady with a child on her back. She's carrying a child, but she's carrying a suitcase in one hand, and she's carrying a rankin on one hand. Now I'm looking and I'm saying, for whatever reason, whoever is meant to walk with her, they are not here. Let me draw closer and give a hand. So I move to this lady. I say, Coco, can I take the other parcel? She looked at me. Said, said, ah, I'm Danami. My son. Who are you? I told him my name. And my surname ended there. Thank you, my son. People like you are no longer found in our days. Are you hearing my, my, my point? You are seeing a need. You don't have to start prophesying. No. Sometimes we become too spiritual for nothing. When we actually need to take a towel and wrap ourselves and serve. It wasn't a long walk. To, to, to the city wall. But when I handed her over her parcels, she looked at me and said, Mdanami, may God bless you. She said that three times. Do you think those blessings are nothing? Saving in your walk with God. Learn saving. What do dirty feet represent? 
As Jesus concentrated on the feet. Because Peter also wanted his head. <laughs> his hands. But Jesus was explaining a spiritual truth. What do feet represent? I want to say feet represent our walk. In our walk with God, we bump on each other. In our walk with God, we can offend each other. In our walk with God, sometimes we are battered by situations. In our walk with God, we face challenges on how to make ends meet. In our walk with God, sometimes even families turn against us. And in the process, you realize you are struggling spiritually. You realize you need somebody to hold hands. You need to stand in somebody. This is the reason why it is so crucial for you to come to the house of God. Because when you come here, somebody will stand with you. Jesus demonstrated a servant spirit by washing the feet of his disciples. Even saying to them, if you can also learn serving, you won't struggle in my work with you. Why did Jesus teach that? The teachers of that time who happened to be Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, all what they knew was to walk around with flowing rods. That's all what they knew and being ready to question anything that Jesus did. Those were the religious leaders. And so all what they knew was to point out errors. They never saw, saw any good in Jesus. All what they knew was to point errors. And so, as Jesus is teaching this, he says in Matthew 20, verse 25, 25, but Jesus called them to himself and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. What do they do? They lord it over. And those who are great exercise authority over them. Verse 20 says, yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him just be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom. And so, as he concludes in John 13, verse 14, he says, Jesus is word, the final words of Jesus, if then I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Say to your neighbor, I'm here. I do not just need you. I need to wash your feet. Please, when I come to wash your feet, give them your feet. Give me your feet. I also talked to one of our, our petition in the house. Yes, I, our petition in the house. I say to her, tell me, what in jail? when people come for pedicure. Because I never separated manicure and pedicure. I thought it was one and the same. So I had to ask. Say to your neighbor, we don't know everything. So I had to ask. But as I was asking her, I, I said to her, please tell me, when you are washing the, 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 the ladies' feet or whoever comes for pedicure, what do you put in, the, in that water? Since we put salt, we put oil, we put foot bath, we put, we put detol. detol. Detol is for killing germs. Salt is for preservation. Oil is for softening the feet. Some of our feet have got colors. Forgive me, Dad. I need to say it in the valley. Cracks. Like a dried dame. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> and 
And these things help to relax the exercise. Then she also says to me, one thing that also a person does when I'm attending to their feet, massaging their feet, they begin to relax. And every form of stress, she says to me, some of them literally come to me to relieve them of their stress. While I'm massaging them. What am I saying to us? If you go, go and serve, wash somebody's feet. Listen, I'm not that talking literally here to say, go and say, hey, say, hey where is the dish? Where is the water? No. I'm saying, attend to their needs. There's a scripture that was shared during prayer as leaders. It was talking about the paralytic man who, for men, saw his needs. And because of their faith, they then said, even if there is no space anymore, we would rather open the roof. Why? They were willing to go beyond what is obvious for reasons of serving that man. And because of their faith, Jesus commanded them and the man was healed. In our work with God, when we minister to people, minister to their needs, we allow them to relax in the things of God. I have noticed it. When you visit somebody's home, begin to talk with them. They relax. The atmosphere is different. It's unlike here at church. Here at church, we all want to be spiritual. Tongues, fire, fire. But let's go home where we have our antarus, where we have our safety shoes, where we have our whatever. Makes your life simpler. Just for symbolisms. About the, just the aspect of, of, of washing others' feet. Number one, I already mentioned love. Number two, the eye contact as you minister to this person also helps to build the relationship. The humility. The humility. Say humility. Walk humbly. It's not just theory. Put it into practice. The reconciliation. Do you realize that even Jesus was asked washing his disciples' feet. He even washed Judas' feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Servanthood. This is the highest form of serving. Do you know why we struggle to walk in humility? Ask your neighbor. Do you know why we struggle to walk in humility? Do you know why? We are full of self. Say self. Self. Here is an extract. He from Apostle Kenneth Notes. He preached this, this message one time at Josiah Tongoga. And as I was just going through it, I thought, wow. So I'm, I'm quoting, quoting his words. He said, the problem for effect is this. I, me, myself. <laughs> and not definitely you. So you may be off the hook. But the self in you, talk about yourself as often as I can. I should mirror myself. I should hear myself in the opinion of others. I must always be suspicious. I must always be appreciated. I must be a little. Be jealous and envious. I must be sensitive to criticism. Who is talking bad about me? I must never forgive. Trust nobody but yourself. Remember I said I'm quoting. Self-love. 
Hulk if others are not grateful for what you have done. Shake and avoid any duties and responsibilities that you are called to attend to in the house. Instead of a me first attitude, we are called to be humble, to walk in humility. I have learned a lot in this house from Apostle Ken in this aspect of servanthood. So that's why I'm citing from it. And one of the things that he further said in those notes, the downfall of Lucifer was the five I wills. What are those five I wills? He said in Isaiah 14, verse 12, he says, For you said in my heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet in the next moment, the word of the Lord came and said, you shall be brought down to hell. You can read it from Isaiah 14, verse 12. So walking in humility means you strip yourself of the self. The me first mentality must die. Paul is right, Galatians 2.20. She's no longer I. She's no longer myself. She's no longer me. But Christ lives inside me. That's what it is. If we say you are humble or you are walking in humility. Why is it like that? First Peter 5, 5 says, Put on humility. For God resists proud ones, but gives grace to the humble. Oh, how I desire grace. Who desires grace from God? Who desires grace from God? One of the ways of receiving that grace from God say to your neighbor is to walk humbly. When you go to a funeral, don't be too smart and avoid the shovel. When you go to a funeral, don't be too smart and avoid cooking and serving. Let them um, come and ask who was that lady? Just the way how you did it in a Because you humbled yourself will minister a life And that person would even come to the house Where did they see you? Serving, not even even preaching. I've preached in many funerals. And I wonder if any of those that I've preached to have ever even come yes, to the house of God. And yet I've heard those that have been touched in a funeral because of the giving, because of the support. And they say, no, I'd rather go to the church. Why? We met a practical while you walk with God always look for an opportunity to serve others let nothing be done out of pride out of vain glory we have read in scripture that Jesus humbled himself and because of his humility the Bible says God exalted him God exalted him in this walk with God, there is a time when God would want to exalt you. Promotion is coming your way. But before promotion can come, or should I say, the road that leads to promotion is walking humbly. Period. You can Think of anything else. But walking humbly 
before God, before people, will minister greatly. Great servers, even as we can see from the Bible, they are great leaders. What affects our work? and our work and if somebody is to follow your footsteps let me say if somebody is to follow your, 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 your footprints your work at a step where you step if somebody is to walk in your footsteps, where will they end up? Food for thought. Sila. In the kingdom of God, serving does not make you less. It actually activates a principle of elevation. The more the opportunity to serve, the more you should rush for them. When we make a call in this house, rush for them. As I need a conclusion right now, I do realize that in our work with God, while we have demonstrated some of these things that I might have mentioned, some of these things that I might not have mentioned, but there are some of us that are really struggling somehow in our Work with God because of various reasons. You know, I, I, I took a reflection on Job's life. Job is reflecting as he is going through this trouble. Job 29, verse 1 to 5. He says there, all that I wear is in months past. In other words, he is looking in retrospect. And in the days when God washed over me, when his lamp shone upon my head, and when his light, I walked through darkness. Just as I was in the days of my prime, when the friendly counsel of God was over my tent, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were around me, when my steps were bathed with cream, and the rock poured out rivers of oil for me. When my steps were bathed with cream. In other words, are your steps washed with Bathed with cream. Referring to gentle walk with God. You may say, you may not understand what I'm going through. I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. As the Bible says in Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley of the shadow of death, are the difficulties that you are facing right now in such a manner that they are like a, a, a valley of shadow of death? Or are the difficulties like the valley of Baca? In Psalms 84, it says there, as they pass or walk through, meaning we do not stay in dark valleys. We don't stay in challenging times. God takes us through them and so we should walk in them. Because when we are walking with God, we are never alone. Come dark valley, come valley of Baca, come fire of the enemy, come rivers, come storm, come challenges. If you are walking with God, you will not Faith. That's why if you go back to that portion again of Isaiah 28, the word faint there is repeated three times. God does not faint. He is not weary. The youth may fail. But may I say the only youth that will faint are only those who do not wait for the Lord. But those that are in this house who have been taught to wait for the Lord, they shall not faint. They will continue to walk with God. Come valleys. Come fire. That is 
our call. Say to your neighbor, we are passing through. Say we are walking through. Hold on my neighbor. We are walking through. We are walking through. The true test of our faith is not how high we jump when we are singing praise I'm, like, I'm one of those who jumps but after jumping in church how much do you remain focused in your work with God through the challenges and the storms of life. A poem is, uh, is, is, is told of two footprints. This poem by Mary Stevenson. I read the poem as it is. One night I dreamt a dream as I was walking along the beach with my Lord. Across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonging to me and one, two, my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that as many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to walk with you, you would walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, this is the Lord responding, My precious child, I love you and will never leave you. You will never ever, during in your times of trials and testings, be alone. When you saw only one set of footprints, it is I then that I carried you. I don't know what difficulties you have faced. I don't know what you are contemplating. In your work with God. I may not really come into your fire that you're going to Or even as I try to come wash your feet. I may not even reach that valley of Baka. But the Lord is saying to you today. When you feel you're powerless. I'm powerful. When, when you think I am not there, I am there. You will walk with me and you will not faint. Let's just stand today as we conclude in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God. We just want to conclude by making these declarations. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Just raise both your hands to the Lord. Imagine your walk with God. How it is when you began. How it is now. What are the things that you have been a challenge? What are the struggles? What has He said to you? What is He saying now? As you just and wait for the Lord. We're just going to declare his word. The declarations that we're making now are just about our walk. Because our walk will never end. Enoch walked with God and he was taken. You will also need to walk with God so that you continue walking with you him till eternity. Say this after me with conviction, with, with an understanding that God is with you. For you, Lord, for you, Lord. 
You will light my lamp. You will light my lamp. The Lord God. The Lord God will enlighten my darkness. Will enlighten my darkness. For by you. For by you. I can run through a troop. I can run through a troop. By my God. By my God. I can leap over a wall. I can leap over a wall. As for God. As for God. His way is perfect. His way is perfect. The law the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is proven. Is proven. It is God. It is God who arms me with strength. Who arms me with strength. He makes my way perfect. And makes my way perfect. He makes my feet. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. Like the feet of a he deer. He sets me. He sets me on high places. On high places. He teaches my hands. He teaches my hands to make woe. To make woe. So that my arms. So that my arms can bend the bow of bronze. Can bend the bow of bronze. You have also given me. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. The shield of your salvation. Your right hand. Your right hand has held me up. Has held me up. Your gentleness. Your gentleness has made me great. Has made me great. You enlarged my path. You enlarged my path under me. Under me. So my feet. So my feet did not sleep. Did not sleep. I am blessed. I am blessed. And I know. And I know. The joyful sound. The joyful sound. I shall walk all along. I shall walk all along. In the light of your countenance. In the light of your countenance. In your name. In your name. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. All day long. All day long. And in your righteousness. And in your righteousness. I am exalted. I am exalted. For you are the glory. For you are the glory. Of my strength. Of my strength. And in your favor. And in your your favor my horn is exalted my horn is exalted no evil no evil shall befall me shall befall me no shall any plague no shall any plague come near my dwelling come near my dwelling for he shall give his angels for he shall give his angels charge over me charge over me to keep me up to keep me up in all my ways in all my ways in their hands in their hands they shall bear me up they shall bear me up lest my foot lest my foot be dashed against a stone. Be dashed against a stone. I shall tread. I shall tread upon the lion. Upon the lion and the cobra. And the cobra. The young lion. The young lion and the serpent. And the serpent. I shall trample. I shall trample under my feet. Under my feet. I have restrained my feet. I have restrained my feet from every form of evil. From every form of evil. That I may keep your word. That I may keep your word. I have not departed. I have not departed from your judgments. From your judgments. For you yourself. For you yourself have told me have taught me your word your word is a lamb is a lamb unto my feet unto my feet and your light and your light unto my path unto my path i shall run i shall run and not be weary and not be weary i shall walk i shall walk and not faint and not faint let's give god all the glory Jesus. Amen. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Amen. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. I shall run and not be weary. I shall walk and not faint. I shall serve and not fail. Oh, now look at somebody who's next to you. Turn to them. Turn to somebody. Say to them, look at them, and say, keep walking. Keep walking with God. Keep sowing in the kingdom. Keep serving God and His people. Keep planting. Keep praying. Keep reaching out. Keep loving. Do not become weary for doing good for in true season you shall reap keep walking with God now I want you to pray for that person I want you to pray for that person and we are not going to rush in this prayer I want you to allow God to Pray prophetically over that. Vumela unkulunkulu agu agu nige umtanda zwe sprofitesh ngalo mundo. Yes. 
If you such a probe, you are a husband and a wife, it's okay, you can swap, you can swap and go. It's okay.